Okay, so now let us look at some of the important results in this probability called convergence in weak convergence and strong convergence. So, did we already define what we mean by IID sequence or uh, we have not yet formally defined it? We have said it right, what we mean by IID sequence independent and identically distributed. We, when we have a sequence of random variables, we actually did this when we are trying to define joint distributions of a sequence of random variables, right. So, what we mean by independent that, so if, if I say that if I have a sequence of, I have a random process, I am going to say this is to be IID, if each of my random variable is independent of others and all the random variable in this sequence have the same distribution, okay. This is as simple as that, okay. Now, let us talk about then we have the following results. So, let x n greater than n greater than or equals to 1 is such that expectation of x n is finite for all n and then we are going to define s n to be summation of x i is i running from 1 to n divided by n. So, this is the average of the first sum of this is the average of first n terms, ok. Then if
So, let us say right now I have a this given sequence of random variables where all of them have the same mean that is the expectation of x n is going to be m for all n and this m is assumed to be finite that is mean of all these random variable is finite and I have defined this x n which is the average of the first n random variable. Then we are going to say that if further each of my random variance of my random variables is bounded okay, and their covariance of any pair of random variables is 0, then this S n by n what I mean so S n. So, sorry I have to be careful here I have to I am going to define S n to be simply x i I have to want to n. So, this is just the sum of the first n random variable and if I am going to look at their average S n by n that converges to this m in the mean squared sense. They are upon bound they are bounded by the same constant. Okay, they are uniformly bounded, but need not be same and we are saying their pairwise covariance is 0. What does this mean? Okay, so, they say uncorrelation, we are saying they are uncorrelated that means they are pairwise independent. It is not that they are independent, this sequence in, 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 in this bullet A, we are not saying that this sequence x i are independent. Okay? We are only saying that they have the same mean and their variances are bounded. Then the second point says that if this sequences are, are IID, right? In that case, what? They are all independent. In that case, they have to be have the same necessarily the same mean and also they necessarily have to the same variance. If that is the case, then they converge in, in probability to the same value mean. And uh, one can show a stronger result under the same IID assumption that this sequence converges in almost sure sense also. We know that almost sure is a stronger notion than converges in probability, right? So, if we can show C, that already implies B. Okay. So, this part, the B part often called as weak law of large numbers. And the last part is called strong law of large numbers. Okay, let us try to understand the first part why that is true. So, if I want to show that S n by n goes to m in the mean squared sense, what I need to show? I need to show that of S n by n by m this goes to 0. If this goes to 0, then I can argue that S n by n converges to m in the mean squared sense. Okay. So, what is the mean of S n by n? Okay, before that, what is the mean of S of n, S n? It is going to be n times m, right? Because I can just, this is nothing but the expect, sum of the n expectations, where each one is value m. So, the expected value of S n minus n is already m, right? So, this is nothing but then in this case, this is nothing but variance of S n by n, right? So, if this is variance of n, I know that this is nothing but 1 by n square of variance of S n, right? And I, we already know that this, we can write it as 1 by n square, this is covariance of S n with itself. 
correct? When we say that uh, variance is nothing of a random variable, nothing but its covariance with itself. Now, if you expand this, so Sn is nothing but the sum of n terms here, this is also sum of n term and we know how to find the expected covariance of such terms, right? So, if, um, if you are going to expand this, what you are going to get is, we did this exercise I think, right, sometime back in the class. That value turns out to be simply covariance of xi minus xj and we know that when i and j are different, we are going to use this uncorrelatedness property and because of that if you simplify this, this is nothing but covariance of xi i1 to n. And now let us, sorry, covariance of xi with itself. This is nothing but its variance, right? And what we said, variance of xi is upper bounded by c. We are going to make use of this assumption that we are making. So, if you do this, what is this going, going to be? So, c by n. And this c we are assumed to be finite, right? So, if I let n go to infinity, this go to 0. So, now is this true that this guy S n by n converges in mean squared sense. So, that is what we have exactly proved that we have showed that as n goes to infinity this goes to 0. So, fine as long as my variances are bounded we have the same means and uh, pairwise my random variables are independent they convergence in mean squared sense. What about this part, how to prove B. Can we say, can we say something uh, about B using A, part A? So, when does convergence in mean squared sense implies convergence in probability? Always implies, right? But now, I am assuming, I am trying to state this B for the case when my sequence is IID, right? So, if my sequence is IID, I know that this al already holds, this already holds because all of them have the same distribution, so their means are also necessarily same. What is not guaranteed is though whether the variance is going to be uniformly, they, they are all going to be same right, but we do not know where they are going to be finite. They could be infinity as well, right, variance. So, if in this case, for this case B, if I make an extra assumption that in my IID, they are IID, but further I assume that their variance are finite, then we are done, right then part A already automatically implies. So, part B, if variance finite for all i, then S n by n converges to m in probability. We just argued that in this case, yes, if my sequence is i i d, in addition if I assume that my variances are finite, all this, all these, the things in part A are already proven. All these conditions in, all the assumptions in part A already holds, right? Then, under this assumption, we have shown that it converges in mean squared sense, and we already know that if it converges in mean squared sense, that automatically implies convergence in probability. Okay. Then comes the case: what about if these variances are not necessarily bounded, they could be infinity. So, that needs a bit more analysis. So, we will skip it actually that can be done. We will do a proof later which will have a similar proof.
flavor that you can use to prove this part also. Okay, then comes the last part. We want to now prove a stronger theorem that this sequence S n by n converges in mean squared sense. Okay. So again, this case. I mean, uh, it's uh, to prove it in general. In very generality, it's going to be a bit difficult. We are going to argue it like the way we did it for part B under a restricted case. To prove this, now we are going to assume that my fourth moments are finite. So I'm only writing the fourth moment of x1 is finite. That means the fourth moment of all the random variables is going to be finite, right? Because I am assuming an IID sequence. Okay. So, we have already, I think, sometime discussed if I, uh, we know that the fourth moment is finite, then all the moments lower than this are also finite. Fine. So, uh, if we can show this under that assumption that already implies part B, right? Because the part B only required variance to be finite, which is a second order statistics. But whereas I am assuming a bound on the fourth order moment, right? So if I assume this, the second order moment already finite. So that is already, that is what I have used to show convergence in probability. Okay, now let us see how if I assume this, why is that convergence in almost sure sense is true. Okay, again, so this is where the proof of monotone convergence comes into picture. Uh, how it comes? First thing to note is Sn, which is the sum of all the random first n random variables, if I am going to take the fourth moment and if I am going if I apply further my IID assumption on that, it simplifies to So, okay, and also I am going to assume that expectation of x1 is fine 0. So, I am going to like uh, to simplify the argument, we are going to make this to assumption one is this fourth moment is finite, second is the second the mean is going to be 0. If I say x1 is 0, that means mean of all random variables is 0, right, because this is an IID sequence. So, we are putting it under this IID assumption. When x1 of x1 is not equal to 0, this expression becomes too long. Uh, so, to just to, to get rid of, uh, see we have this x4 term, x2 term, then comes the joint terms x1, x2, all pairs and all. So, we have to write too many terms. If expectation of x1 is 0, that simplifies and we get this. Okay, now I am going to define y to be a sum of s n by n but raised to the power 4. So, what is this? So, this is how to interpret this, this you have to interpret as limit as m goes to infinity summation n 1 to n. You understand what is the limit of the series, right? It is not a sequence 
here it is a series here okay and that is like as m goes to infinity and we are summing m and we are getting now why this y is well defined why this i can define like this this is a limit right i can write a limit when this exists now notice that sn by n i am raising to the even power so all these terms are going to be non negative okay so because of that if you are going to look this so let's let's take this as ym so let's say this is now a sequence ym ym is defined like this is this sequence ym is monotonically increasing yes right because it is adding more and more positive or non negative terms and that is true for any omega you take a omega for that point and if you do this so for each omega i have a monotonically increasing sequence so it will converge maybe to infinity but it will converge so that is what that limit i am going to that limiting value i am going to take it as y it's fine now i have by 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 defining my y as the limit of this y ms and uh, the way we have defined it is true that y m of omega is going to be greater than y m plus 1 omega right this is a monotonically increasing sequence if that is the case can i invoke my a uh, monotone convergence theorem and can apply expectation on both sides and interchange the limits so what i want to do is i want to do is expectation of y is nothing but expectation of this quantity but now this is a limit because i have argued that this is a monotonically increasing sequence i have the liberty to interchange my limit and expectation okay so what we just said is expectation of y is nothing but fine i mean i am just i am doing nothing i am just playing with the definitions that i have used and that's fine if you guys have lost already what are the definitions we are using so but just see that what are the things that we are manipulating here now i am going to use my sn relation from this so if i am going to do that the expression i get is okay now here what i'm going to invoke the condition that this finite this fourth moment is going to be finite so i have invoked this condition that expectation of x1 is zero when i wrote this expression here so had this expectation of x1 is not equals to zero there would have been many more terms thanks to this assumption i could only write it simply like this and now i am going to assume so what i have assumed is this expectation of the fourth moment is 
sorry this fourth moment is finite that also meant that this second moment is finite this guy is finite here this guy is finite here and this guy here is at most n square and this guy is is n but on the denominator i have n to the power 4 okay you can verify that this series is going to so so just let us say I also do not know what is the limit, but let us write it. So, this is going to be expectation of x14 divided by n cube plus, so this is going to be what 3 1 by n square minus 1 by n cube, right, in the expectation of x1 square 2. And I I do not think this is this this is this is not a sequence right like this is the sum. So, this is going to be a series we have. So, this sum is going to converge to some finite value we can check that because I know that 1 by n square summation 1 by n square converges right. So, summation 1 by n cube should definitely converge then ok. And similarly, this 1 by n square converges and this 1 by n cube also converges, their difference is also going to be some finite. So, whole of this quantity here, this series is going to be finite, ok. I do not know what is that quantity, but what we are trying to argue is that this expectation is going to be finite. So, if this expectation is finite, we know that probability that y is finite is going to be happen with probability y. Just says whatever the conditions we have, we have established expectation of y is finite. If expectation of y is finite, it must be the case that that y takes finite value with probability 1. So, this is always true. If expectation of y is finite, then this is true, but the other way is not always true, ok. Fine. So, let us quickly complete this. Now, the last point we need to argue is How the way we have defined y, we have defined it like a like this right series. If summation of a n converges, so let us if a n converges, let us say a n converges to some quantity a, what will a n look like? What will, will the ANs will converge to? It is going to converge to 0, right. So, by this we know that my Sn by n to the power 4 is going to converge to 0, then I can take the fourth root of that and can also argue that Sn by n. converges to 0 for all omega, yeah. I have not yet said that right like, so if y is going to be finite with probability 1, right, then S n by n that that sequence is going to converge to 0. So, now we have to argue that this convergence implies the almost sure convergence. Why is that? Because y being finite happened with probability 1, right? And that is what we are using. This implies this. If this is already probability 1, what can be the probability of this? it should be 1 right then what does what is the what in what sense it converges it converges in almost sure sense ok. So, is that clear like if this is 
by is less than infinity it must be the case that this sequence should converge this this event should happen and this should event should happen with probability 1 so this is the standard result right in analysis why not so just to you take the contrapositive case suppose an does not converge to anything it diverges okay that means ans are going to infinity then do you expect this to converge at all the series no way right yeah yeah it can converge to infinity but let's say we are talking about we have a case where the where this is finite right yeah right so it could converge to infinity but uh, we have specifically shown that this is a finite case that is not necessarily always the case right for example take this case a n is to be 1 by n summation 1 by n goes to infinity whereas 1 by n goes to 0 ok so let us stop here.